Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the creations of time code. Um, this is the time code that you probably already familiar with. Creation of time code, and we're gonna place it inside um, Blender video editing. So this is the VSE. This is the video sequence editor. Um, and as you can see, I'm achieving this just simply by using the text block, uh, what do they call it, text strip. Um, so if you like shift A and then add a, like a FX strip called text, uh, you, can, you can actually replace the text with anything you like. And in this case, we are using the time code. You can see that here's the text, is, the, the text data is changing if I'm uh, scrubbing on the, on the timeline. Okay, how do we achieve this? Uh, do we need to use animation nodes or stretch off? Now, this is totally up to you. It's actually quite interesting. Um, I do a little bit of research and then, of course, I know animation nodes already have a single node that's dealing with a time code, which is this guy right here. And we just need to supply the, the frame number and the frame rate. And as a result, we already get a time code. And with simply just by using um, animation nodes, uh, script node, we can plug the time code data into the text, uh, which is the this guy right here. So that's actually rather simple. We already have the nodes. I actually dig inside the animation nodes code, and apparently, animation nodes is using the BPY utils. So on top of that, um, I thought it was like a more like a like a made from scratch thing, but apparently not. BPY or Blender Python already provides utils that deals with uh, with this uh, time codes, and I believe there is also a time frame number somewhere here in the marker or somewhere. Mm, I can't remember, but you can actually add it to the timeline as well. Um, if you were to make like a the script from scratch, and I I I actually made also in using uh, spread chalk right here and it seems like a little bit more elaborate but it's actually um, it doesn't need to be like this this is just uh, me using nodes and try to dig into the, post the the data block and I'm not using any script here I'm just using nodes but and but in spread chalk I also make a spread chalk script node like this this is actually um, kind of mimicking the the one that's animation nodes. <coughs> animation nodes does. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm using I'm using the script node light in Spreadshock, and it looks something like this. From BPY utils, import SMT SMPTE from frame. This is the the module functions that's already provided from BPY, and then simply just writing something like this. This is actually very very similar to animation nodes one. I just uh, kind of have a look and copy paste and made a little bit of changes. But it's, uh, it's actually kind of interesting ex uh, example where you really like uh, either you make it from scratch or you if you're someone if there's already functions that Blender provided why not you use the functions and then you can just use it uh, inside any nodes. Anyway, if you wanna do it from scratch, I'll I'll show it to you. Uh, you know already that the the time code itself is already uh, being available somewhere here. If we are if we are stamping the output into the render, um, here we go. This is the I think the time, the time code. If I render this real quick, we can get this uh, time code zero zero and uh, whatever number here. Um, and I think we, by default we are working in a twenty four frame per second. So once the last number hits twenty three, it's gonna go to the next numbers, uh, representing minutes and seconds etc so that's uh okay we already have time code over there but what if we want to to have the time code inside the video sequence editor uh, i'm gonna show you real quick so we switch to video editing and like i said we're gonna use the the text strip effects shift a effect strips text and this is what we get and this is uh, the name. The name of the text strip is, of course, just text. And we can see number five is the, the starting number. Don't care too much about that. There's actually a little text here. 
Normally this text strip is used to create subtitle inside Blender and you can export it as a subtitle file. But what we care more is about this uh, this guy right here. Um, I'll change it to hello. Now we have hello here. I'll just make this 10 times bigger. So that's uh, like just this text. So whatever whatever we type in here, it will change directly. And yeah, that's exactly what we want to do using animation nodes. It's very, very, very simple. We just switch to node editor and turn on animation nodes. And gonna save this as an time code. Um, in the next live loading, I might actually talk about the time code thing again, but using Spreadshop and then kind of um, dig it, um, do it differently, but I think it's kind of interesting, so I, I want to show you that as well. But in uh, animation notes, you, you already have the notes that does that time code generator. Okay, so this is the time code. And if we debug it, it looks like this exactly. So if we add a time in here, time info, just plug it into the frame. You, know, you can see that the time code is working already. We can offset it, etc. if you like. Um, we can specify the frame rate. At the moment, by default, it's 24. So, yeah. But all, all we need to do is to plug this time code into this guy right here, right? Uh, to change the text uh, in real time. How do we do that? Now, um, it's actually pretty simple, but um, we're gonna do it using script node because I don't think we have we might actually able to use expression I'm not quite sure and simply just use uh, just get the the path to this guy see bpy.data.scenes sequence editor sequence all text text and then if we just copy the data path I'll create a text and quickly paste it there. So it does, this doesn't give us the whole um, address, so I'm gonna do it differently. Control, Option, Command, Shift, C. And paste it again. Now we have ppy.data.scenes. Now we have the full path. I'm not sure if we can actually just plug in, plug this into the expression. It might actually work. string okay this guy expecting a string type not a float oh actually if we use like a string conversion convert to text or something I think it will it might work There you go, it's actually worked. Very very cool. Um with this guy we don't we don't need the X anymore and so if we convert this into that guy, convert this this number into the text. Now we have this text. Oh, well, um but we might need to round round the text first because currently it's the number is a bit too long. Snap. I can't remember the uh, minimum logarithm power, maximum floor, copy sign, maybe rep reciprocal. I can't remember. No. But anyway, we can simply plug in the time code into this guy. And there you go, we have the time code. It's very, very simple. We don't need to use script node, whatever, it's just expression. All we need to do is just to ensure that the data path is there and then it's equal this y which is a variable the variable name can be anything <coughs> we can even say just the time code and here is just type in the time code this is a very very similar to blender's own expression um, another method is to use a script node but we don't need to do that apparently so that's cool so we have our time code right there yeah of course um, just in case you didn't know already 
We can actually do it in 3D as well if you like with animation nodes. Just simply use text object output and we need just a text object in the 3D and simply assign the time code into this guy. Um, select the text object and then put the, the time code data in there and we should have our time code right there. Very, very simple. Um, normally, the more like uh, the more developers, if they make um, lots of function into a node, it's gonna be beneficial for the artist. Yeah, depend. It really depends. Sometimes like uh, there are nodes like this that's uh, kind of simple enough to create. Otherwise, it takes too long time, and developer just won't do it. But I found that this is really really. Um, interesting because once once the developer create the nodes it's uh, become so easy you just use it and it will work i will try to render this out real quick with a paper sky ambient occlusion uh, maybe i need a camera or something not camera to view so we have this uh, text object and on top of that, we also have this guy. Um, okay, it's not rendering apparently because the video sequence editor, we need to add a scene. And the scene needs to be under the text. So let me move the text to the top. So this is very cool. I really like the video sequence editor. It's kind of like a like a 2D layered format. You can put uh, as many as uh, 30 layers into it and then you can have like a 3D data your render is coming out and then you also have this uh, time code on top of that I think that's like brilliant you have the 3d you have the real you can have real render as well see this is the final like a uh, just a test render but the render once the render is finished rendering we can see the the 3d result uh, being rendered and then also the time code and then the time code from text the time code from the this marker, uh, this guy right here from metadata, stem output, and then also the final <coughs> final result. There you go, it's uh, three different ways of using the time code and we are also using animation nodes. It's very, very simple to do. And maybe in the next live loading, I'll talk how to actually do it using SquareChalk if you're building from scratch and might seem more elaborate but you will see more beneficial because once you understand how the data really being presented being stored in blender you can pipe in your own data you can make your own generate the data uh, it's very very cool basically um, and of course we are kind of using nodes a little bit of pythons and yeah i think that's really powerful knowledge i think so anyway, uh, if you have any comments, feedbacks, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank